okay, now this is getting fun, people. It's almost like I do better when I don't have a layout form. So I'm going to be dating these not only for my reference, um, but you can also see because I refer back to 10, 15, 20 years ago, I'm talking about um, when I post this. So again, it is Friday, August 26th, my youngest niece's birthday. And I really should know how old she is. I think she's I think she's 19 or 20. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about today, this is very interesting because it is a huge part of my journey um, to learning what it means and the importance of self-worth. And so I'm going to get right into it. Um, these are really the roots of a lot of my... I don't even know to say my issues. But for those of you who haven't listened to me before, um, basically, to put it briefly, is that, um, well, let's start with culturally. Okay, culturally, I've talked about this before. And this is the thing when we go into talk about programming and influencing things like that. I feel like the secret is because it's the focus of our culture to focus on the physical, our physical image, right? How sexy and beautiful we are. We kind of, some of us get trapped into that. And so basically it means, you know, it's kind of not cool personal growth and working on yourself. You know, nobody really cares. And I know that sounds really bad, but um, I mean, there it, it does matter. You know, but I think a lot of us grow up thinking that way because it is the focus of the culture, right? Our exterior, what we own, people we know, all these sorts of things. You can go listen to my stuff um, and hear me go on to that rant. Okay, our inner character doesn't matter. Okay, but as a result of this and working on myself, it's taken me a very long time, probably to 35. And now again, I just turned 45 is that yeah if people make a comment about the way that i look meaning like they think that i am pretty or anything like that um i don't want to say it's difficult for me to take a compliment i just look at it differently because i'm like there's always another prettier person or um what's the word everybody and i don't assume anybody is everybody is attracted to me because everybody has different tastes right so as a result though of growing up like that and working on myself and not saying that i thought that i was ugly but i definitely did not think i was attractive especially growing up in a, a dominated white community um, in Pennsylvania. Okay. So culture was not embraced. So that is where, um, we're going to go back. Um, so that's the point that I am now, right? My inner character is more important to me. Um, and, um, sometimes it is difficult for me to take a compliment, um, on that. So, um, again, which was so not me back then. So we're going to go back to age 14, everything that I was seeing um, at the time. So this is what early 90s, um, what we are seeing in mainstream. So at that time was blonde, white and skinny. There was there was this um, uh, I, I to give you like good examples, because Pamela Anderson was kind of down the road. But um, at that time, I, I can't even remember at that time, but that model, that Aryan white look um, has been around for a very long time. So people who like to say like or don't realize like there are people outside of black or American, African-American culture that we face either dim discrimination or feeling awkward, right? Bruce Lee's story is another thing, even no matter how famous he got. So other cultures, we do face the same thing. So I got to give you that background there. So the two friends, I would say I was hypnotized by physically beautiful women. Okay. So, um, we are going to say, so this was not in a lesbian <laughs> sort of way at that time. You know, I've always thought women are attractive and beautiful. But um, my thing that I'm not afraid to admit, but I think it's funny to hear out loud, is that um, I wanted to know what it would be like to get that kind of attention, right? To, to be friends with people like that. And guess what? It actually didn't help me. It actually made it worse. 
so the couple of we're gonna say acquaintances because i look about it now you know it's just who you hung out with at the time were they good friends to me not really right and i was the one when one of them moved away was traveling and my dad was um taking me to go visit her so I would say, and the reason I can say hypnotized is because I feel like I was controlled. I was controlled by this hypnotic power till the age of 30. And I would consider it hypnotized. So first friend, number one, maybe this is about seventh or eighth grade, beautiful Italian girl. Um, she was the one who kind of had the boyfriends all the time, but she also had them 24 seven. So that was my basis for like seeing a relationship or I don't know to say that oh they must love each other a lot but um I I think it was to an extreme like in my opinion it was not healthy um so after that friendship dispersed and she moved away I don't know if you want to use the word dispersed but um phased out the second friend this was about sixth grade um again white um they actually both had big boobs um white and she would, I would say, in my mind, um, this was till about age 30 that I was able to let go of that, of her in my mind energ and energetically, is that I compared myself to her. Um, definitely, most definitely, she was cooler than me. She was a better artist. She was, she was just more creative. She was just better at everything. Um, but she probably is gave me one of my biggest life lessons. Um, because I did end up realizing um, it helped me realize the importance of self-worth and what that means and the difference with self-esteem. So, okay, so through high school, we ended up, but she also, I remember, um, because she was a totally different personality, um, I don't feel like she embraced my compassionate sensitive side so there were some things that she said also that stuck in my brain that kind of affected my ability to be myself which was um her saying to me one time are you crying like she wasn't very empathetic okay so speeding it up talking about this journey is that i look at who i was and based on those two people and what it did to me and my focus and everything about that. And um, what I just want to say about that is that's why I talk and why I know so much about being hypnotized by physical beauty, because I also did it as an adult with a very short term boyfriend, is that because of that focus on on physical image and comparing myself and all of that, um, because of that, I wasn't able to see the importance of inner character building. So that on top of my hat hatred or disgust, I would say, for parts of American mainstream culture and what the media was showing to me. And like I said, their focus on those outside things that those are the roots of why I wanted to write my little self-help guide. And that's called Unveiling Your Truth on Amazon. And that is like a guide on how to help build your self-worth. And it has affirmations and things on there. So you can go check it out if that's something that interests you. But this is just a little clip I wanted to bring um, to share with you for those of you, a lot of people who have not heard my story before, is that um, that is... Uh, <laughs> That explains a lot of how I know um, uh, what I know when I'm talking about with the self-worth and kind of trying to explain it. And it wasn't until I started taking self-defense um, at 35 that I really found out what it means to uh, really value yourself. I, like I said, know my rights. I would have thought I was or would have said I was a confident person, in, you know, as I went into my earlier 20s as far as my abilities. But as I describe now and talk about this, there is a difference in your faith and abilities and actually your place and purpose in the world. And then along with that, self-esteem is just how you feel about yourself, which is very confusing. But um, there is a difference between all of those. And I'll explain that another time. Um, so I am going to, um,
finish up by saying, yes, my 20s, um, I became more confident when I started building and working on myself, which started with I was um, opened up to different cultural foods. And even though I'm half Thai, I got more even more expanded and open with foods from a boyfriend I had at the time, my very first one. And um, that's when I learned to play the didgeridoo. I always wanted to um, learn from from him. And then um, I didn't learn from him, but I learned on my own on a PVC pipe, which is what I recommend to start with. Um, if you don't want to buy one first, um, different types of food. Yeah, Ethiopian food, Indian food, Brazilian music, which has become one of my favorites. Um, on and on and on. But in my 20s, that journey is where really I expanded and tr tried different things on my own, um, you know, doing things by myself, just venturing out and uh, self-defense, learning social skills, learning speak up skills, everything that I never had as um, a teen being introverted and on and on and on I could talk about. But I wanted to share this with you today because these are the roots of, of my story. And I always thought and that I would do something with teenage girls, which I have done. Girls on the run is much better, in my opinion, um, an experience than Girl Scouts. That's just here, my experience in Sacramento. And so um, Girls on the Run's full on, like really with the empowerment studies. Um, and I've coached and different things like that and then went on um, through my self-defense experience, um, teaching and domestic violence um, workshops, um, I guess, focused on them and empowerment programs for women. And then um, also with my daughter, um, empowering her. So this has been my journey thus far. It's gone on to expand to want to uh, share with others this self-worth building. Maybe you will see the importance of it and becoming a mental readiness coach and specializing with first responders as well. Okay. Cause a lot of the public, um, there's lots of things that I wanted when I became interested in them, when I was taking self-defense and learning how to shoot guns, which is another part of my journey. I always wanted to know how they dealt with their stress aside from drugs and alcohol against, again, that's a cultural thing. A lot of us have been shown that is the way and um, the public also doesn't know that uh, how many suicides are going on and they continue. So this is my path right now, August 26, 2022. I want to share with you the roots of everything. And I did not go into my into my influences that helped me during that time. But basically, it was my music and my writing. Okay, so I will talk to you next time.